Teaching 4 Revelations of the Divine The Third Testament Revelations of Jesus Christ Chapter 63 Thus saith the Lord, The Father of all beings speaks to you in this moment. The love that created you is felt by all who hear this word. Speaking to you is the only God who exists, the one whom you called Jehovah when he showed you this strength and revealed the law to you on Mount Sinai, the one whom you called Jesus because the divine word was in him, and the one whom you called the Holy Spirit because I am the Spirit of Truth. When I speak to you as Father, it is the book of the law that opens before you. When I speak to you as the Master, it is the book of love I show to my disciples. When I speak as the Holy Spirit, it is the book of wisdom that illuminates with its teachings, forming one single doctrine, for it comes from one single God. God is light, love and justice. All who show these attributes in life represent and honor their Lord. Do not say I am the God of poverty or sorrow, because Jesus was always followed by a multitude of the sick and afflicted. I seek out the sick, the sorrowful and the poor, but it is to fill them with health, hope and happiness, because I am the God of joy, life, peace and light. Yes, people, I am the beginning and the end for you. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Though I do not yet tell you or reveal all the teachings I have reserved for your spirit, those you will know when you are very distant from this world. There are many new lessons I will reveal to you now, and I will continue providing you that which you are able to possess without becoming vain or causing you to raise yourselves up before humanity with an air of superiority. You know already that those who are vain of their works, by that same vanity, destroy them. That is why I have taught you to work in silence, so that your works produce love as their fruit. You still lack understanding of many of the revelations destined to form part of your knowledge, but which men have supposed to be proper only to God. When someone has expressed his desire to interpret them, or to try to penetrate them, he has instantly been branded blasphemous or judged reckless. You must learn much to be sensitive to my inspirations and my calls. How many times have you sensed the vibrations of the spiritual without correctly understanding who it was that called to you? That language is so confusing to you that you cannot understand it well, and you end up attributing the spiritual manifestations to hallucinations or material causes. Do not find it surprising that being possessor of everything created, I would appear before you asking for love. I am the God of gentleness and humility. I have not come to make a display of my greatness. Instead, I conceal my perfection and my regalia to draw nearer to your heart. If you beheld me in all my splendor, how much would you weep for your faults? Feel me very close to you. Evidence of that I have given you during the difficult moments of your life. I have wanted you to make your heart my dwelling place, so that you may feel my presence there. Why is it that you are not able to feel my presence when I am within you? Some seek me in nature, others only feel me beyond the material. But truly I say to you, I am in everything and everywhere. Why do you always seek me outside of you when I am also within your being? Even if there were no religions in the world, still it would be enough to concentrate on the depths of your being to find my presence in your inner temple. I tell you as well that it is sufficient for you to observe what life offers you to find in it the book of knowledge which at every step opens its most beautiful pages and its deepest lessons. You will understand then that it is not right for the world to be lost when it bears the road in its heart, nor that it be confounded in the darkness of ignorance while it is living within such light. Today I make my universal language heard in all, 
to tell them that though I am in each one of you, no one should say that God is inside man, for it is the beings and all creation which is inside God. I am the Lord, and you the creatures. I do not wish to call you servants, but children. Recognize, however, that I am before you. Love my will and respect my law, knowing that in what is stained by me can be no imperfection or error. I formed you in order to love you, and also so that I could feel loved. You need me just as I need you. Those who state that I do not need you do not speak the truth. If it were so, I would never have created you. Nor would I have made myself man to rescue you with that sacrifice that was such a great proof of love. I would have allowed you to be lost. Yet you must recognize that if you are nourished by my love, it is only right that you offer the same to your father. For I continue saying to you, I thirst, I thirst for your love. How can you think that I love less those who suffer most? How can you take your pain as a sign that I do not love you? If you knew that it is precisely out of love for you that I have come. Have I not told you that the righteous are already saved and that the healthy do not need a physician? If you feel that you are ill and in the examination by the light of your conscience you judge yourself sinners, be certain that it is for you that I have come. If you believe that God once wept, truly I can tell you that it was not for those enjoying his glory, but for those lost and crying. My mansion is prepared for you. When you reach it, you will truly enjoy it. How can a father live in a royal lodging, tasting delicious dishes, knowing that his own children are like beggars at the doors of his own home? Know the law, love righteousness, Practice love and charity. Allow your spirit the holy liberty of elevating itself toward its mansion, and you will be loving me. Do you want a perfect model as to what you should do and what you should be in order to reach me? Imitate Christ. Love me in him. Seek me through him. Come to me through his divine footsteps. But do not love me through his human life or in his image or substitute the practice of his teachings with rituals and forms, because you will eternalize yourselves in your differences, in your enmity, and in your fanaticism. Love me in Christ, but in his spirit, in his doctrine, and you will be complying with the eternal law, because in Christ is contained justice, love, and wisdom with which I have manifested to mankind the existence and omnipotence of my spirit. Humans and Destiny It has been long since you were with me, and long since you knew what you really are, because you have allowed many attributes, powers and gifts deposited in you by your Creator to remain sleeping within your being. You are asleep to the spirit and the conscience, and it is precisely in those spiritual attributes that the true greatness of man resides. You imitate the beings of this world because here they are born and here they die. The Master asks you, O oh beloved disciples, what is yours in this world? All that you possess the Father has given you for your use while in transit on this earth and while your heart beats. If your spirit proceeds from my divinity, if it is a breath of the celestial Father, if it is an incarnation of an atom of my spirit, and if your body was also formed within my laws and is entrusted to you as an instrument of your spirit, then, my much-loved children, nothing is yours. All creation is of the Father, and you have been made the temporary holders of it. Remember that your material life is only a single step in eternity, a ray of light in infinity, and you must therefore attend to what is eternal, that which never dies, and that is the spirit. Let it be the spirit that guides the mind, 
and not the mind, guided alone by a heart ambitious for human glory that governs your life. Understand that if you wish to be guided by the orders of your brain, you will exhaust it and be unable to go beyond where its meager resources can take you. I tell you that if you yearn to know why you have felt inspired to do good, and your heart is inflamed with charity, allow your heart and understanding to be guided by the Spirit, and you will be astounded by the power of your Father. It is right that it is the spirit which reveals wisdom to the human mind, and not the mind that gives light to the spirit. Many will not understand what I tell you, because the order of your lives has been for so long altered. Understand, O、oh、disciples, that spirituality permits the conscience to manifest itself more clearly. And that he who knows how to listen to that wise voice will not be fooled. Be imitate with your conscience; it is the voice of a friend, through which the Lord shines His light, now as Father, now as Master, and now as Judge. Be tireless in rereading my word, for like an invisible chisel, it will polish the roughness of your character. Until you are prepared to deal with the most delicate of your brother's problems, in them you will find sorrow, atonement, and restitution, whose causes may be very diverse. Some will have an origin that is not difficult to understand, but others you will discover only through intuition, revelation, or spiritual vision, and so be able to relieve your brothers of a heavy burden. These gifts will only perform prodigies when he who puts them in practice has been inspired by charity for his fellow men. What is it that men call supernatural, if all that is of me and my works is natural? Would it not be rather the evil and imperfect works of men that are supernatural, since originating from whom they do, and possessing the attributes they do, it should be natural for men always to do good? In me, all has a profound and simple answer: nothing is in darkness. You call everything you do not know or that you see wrapped in mystery supernatural, but when your spirit earns its elevation by merit and beholds that which it could not see before, it will find that everything in creation is natural. If you had predicted the advances and discoveries that man has made in these times to the humanity of a few centuries past, even the scientists would have doubted and considered such marvels as supernatural. Now that you have evolved, following human science step by step, you still marvel at them, but see them as natural works. I must tell you that you should not believe that it is indispensable for the spirit to have a human body and life on Earth in order to evolve. However, the lessons that he receives in this world are certainly of great benefit toward his perfection. The flesh helps the spirit in his evolution, his experiences, his atonement, and his struggles. This is the mission that corresponds to it. And you may confirm that in this manifestation of my divinity, through the man whose understanding I have come to make use of as a means to transmit my message, understand that not only the spirit, but even the smallest detail of the material form has been created for spiritual purposes. I have come to give a reminder and a calling to your spirit. So that by overcoming the influence of the material, which has come to dominate him, he can make his light reach the heart and mind, utilizing his gift of intuition. This light signifies for your spirit the path towards its freedom. This doctrine comes to offer it the means to elevate itself above the human existence, and to be the guide for all its works and lord over its feelings, rather than a slave of lower passions. Or a victim of weakness and miseries. Who but I would be able to reign over the spirits and govern their destiny? No one, 
And so, those who, wishing to rule, have tried to usurp the place of the Lord, create for themselves a kingdom according to their own caprices, ambitions, vanities and inclinations, a reign of the material, of low passions and ignoble sentiments. You cannot impose yourself on the conscience, for it contains perfect justice. In the spirits, only purity has power over the noble fibers, and only what is good moves them. In a word, the spirit is fed only by truth and goodness. If I have made everything on earth for the enjoyment of men, use it always for your benefit. Do not forget that within you is a voice that tells you the limits within which you can take what nature offers you, and that inner voice must be obeyed. Just as you seek a home, shelter, sustenance, and satisfactions to make the existence of your body more agreeable, so too you must concede to the spirit that watch is necessary for its progress and well-being. If it feels attracted to the superior regions where its true dwelling lies, let it rise up. Do not imprison it. It seeks me to be nourished and strengthened. I tell you that each time you allow it to free itself in this way, it will return happy to its shell. The spirit wishes to live. It seeks its immortality. It wishes to cleanse and purify itself. It hungers for knowledge and thirsts for love. Allow it to think, feel and work. Allow it to take a part of your time, to manifest itself and enjoy its freedom. After this life, of all you are in the world, only your spirit will remain. Allow it to gather and hoard virtues and merits, so that at the hour of its liberation, it is not like a beggar before the gates of the promised land. I do not wish any more restitution or pain for you. I wish for the spirits of all my children to come with their light to illuminate my kingdom, like the stars that lend beauty to the firmament and bring gladness to the heart of your father. Since for some time there has been hostility between them, my word shall come to reconcile the spirit with the material, so that you may know that the body you have considered as obstacle and the temptation to the passage of the spirit can be the greatest instrument of your fulfillment on earth. Try to create harmony between the spirit and the physical body, so that you may easily comply with my instructions. Make the body yield with love. Be forceful if necessary. Take care not to follow fanaticism to blind you, so as not to act cruelly against it. Make of your being one will only. I do not tell you to purify only your spirits, but also to strengthen your physical body, so that the new generations which come from you might be healthy, and their spirits will be able to fulfill their delicate missions. I wish you to form homes that believe in the one God, homes that are temples where love, patience and altruism are practiced. In them, you should be the teachers of the children, whom you should surround with tenderness and understanding, watching over them and following their every step with attention. Be generous with your love to those who have been gifted with beauty, as well as to those who apparently have an unpleasing presence. A beautiful face is not always the reflection of an equally beautiful spirit, while the apparent ugliness of the other may hide a virtuous spirit that you should value. Think seriously of the generations that come after you. Think of your children, who you must give spiritual life, which is faith, virtue and spirituality, just as you have given them material existence. Keep vigil over the virtue of your family and the peace of your home. See how even the poorest of the poor can be the owners of that treasure. Recognize that the human family is the representation of the spiritual family. In it, the man is converted to a father, bearing real similarity to his celestial father. The woman, with her maternal heart full of love, is the image of the Divine Mother. 
and the family that they form with their union is a representation of the spiritual family of the Creator. When the parents have known how to prepare themselves, the home is the temple where you can best learn to comply with my laws. The destiny of the parents and the children is in me, yet it falls to some to help each other on their missions and in their restitutions. Oh, how light would be the cross and how easy the existence if all parents and children loved each other. Even the greatest trials would be lessened by affection and understanding. Their acceptance of the divine will shall see them compensated with peace. Study the spirits that surround you and that cross your path in life, so that you may appreciate their virtues and receive the message they bring you, or so that you may give to them what they must receive from you. Why have you thought little of those of your fellow men that destiny has placed on your path? You have closed the door of your heart to them, unaware of the lesson they had to bring you. How many times you have cast aside the very one who brought a message of peace and hope for your spirit, and then complain when you yourselves have filled your cup of bitterness. Life has unexpected changes and surprises, and what will you do if tomorrow you anxiously seek the one whom you arrogantly rejected today? Keep in mind that it's possible that he whom you reject and scorn today Tomorrow you will anxiously seek, but many times it will be too late. What a beautiful example of harmony is offered to you by the cosmos, shining heavenly bodies that vibrate in life-filled space, circled by other bodies. I am the divine and shining star that gives life and warmth to the spirits. Yet, how few there are who stay on their path and how many there are that spin outside their orbit. You may say that the material stars do not enjoy free will, while men who do have for this reason left the path. That is why I say that the struggle is so meritorious for the spirits that, having the gift of free will, subject it to the law of harmony with their creator. None who call themselves students of this spiritual teaching complain to the Father of being poor in their material lives or lacking many comforts that others have in abundance, or of suffering, want and deprivations. Those lamentations are born of the material, which, as you know, has only one existence. Your spirit has no right to speak thusly to its Father, nor to act dissatisfied nor to blaspheme against its own destiny, for every spirit in its extensive journey upon the earth has run the entire gamut of experiences, of pleasures and of human satisfactions. The dematerialization of the spirit started some time ago, and in it, that pain and that poverty that you are reluctant to put up with and have your heart suffer, helps. All spiritual and material goods have an importance that you must recognize, so that you do not deprive either of their value. Every creature, every man has a place assigned him that he must not miss. However, he must also not take a place that does not correspond to him. Why do you fear the future? Will you fail to take advantage of the past experiences your spirit has accumulated? Will you leave the harvest ungathered? No disciples. Understand that no one can distort his destiny. He can only postpone his own hour of triumph and increase the sorrows that already exist on the way. The kingdom of the Father is the inheritance of all his children. It is indispensable to obtain that grace by the merits of the Spirit. I do not wish you to see it impossible for you to reach the grace that brings you closer to me. Do not be sad upon hearing, in my word, that the promised land will be reached through great work and effort. Be glad, for he who directs his life toward that idea does not suffer disappointments or feel defrauded. It will not happen to him as it does to many who go in search of the glories of the world, which after much effort they do not obtain, 
or those who obtaining them soon suffer seeing them vanish until they have nothing. I give you the keys to open the gates to your eternal happiness. Those keys are of love, from which flows charity, forgiveness, understanding, and the humility and peace with which you must pass through life. How great is the happiness of your spirit when it dominates the material and enjoys the light of the Holy Spirit. This earth, which has always sent to the beyond a harvest of spirits that are sick, tired, confused, or of little advancement, soon will be able to offer me fruits worthy of my love. Illness and pain will be exiled from your lives when you live a healthy and elevated existence. And when death comes, it will find you prepared for the journey to the spiritual mansion. Do not weaken, O spirits, you to whom I specifically direct my words. Persevere on the path, and you will know peace. Truly, I tell you, all are destined to know happiness. I would not be your father if you had not been created to share the glory with me. Do not forget, however, that for your joy to be perfect, it is necessary for you to cultivate your merits step by step so that your spirit comes to me feeling worthy of that divine reward. See how I help you and accompany you all along the way? Have full confidence in me, knowing that my mission and my destiny are joined with yours.